All right, helicopter warf warfare in Vietnam. And you, did you mean like warfare? It says W A R E. What is warfare? Uh, hey, old Billy Rednuts. I just wanted to recommend that you listen to episode 248 of Jocko Willink's podcast with John Stryker Meyer, where uh, they discuss Operation Tailwind of the Vietnam War in, the great de in great detail from the point of view of the soldiers who survived this operation. Well, I'm already in. Helicopters were beginning to play huge roles in warfare strategy during the time and were used to carry soldiers deep behind enemy lines during the Vietnam War. The soldiers, uh, sorry, the stories they share are absolutely insane in this podcast. They talk about what it was like to fly with the pilots who would fly in and out of the jungle to rescue soldiers while being shot at. Yeah. Um, there's a comic I know, Tom Rhodes. His dad flew a helicopter in Vietnam, and I smoked a cigar with him one time, and he told me some absolutely insane stories. Um, anyway, and while the helicopter flying in front of them, okay, wait, I, gotta keep, I, I told that Tom Rhodes thing in the middle of a sentence. Let me back up here. They talk about what it was like to fly with pilots who would fly in and out of the jungle to rescue soldiers while being shot at and while the helicopters flying in front of them are getting shot down. Dude, the balls of that. Crazy stories about dealing with engine failure from enemy fire, handling auto rotations with a full load of wounded soldiers. Yeah, you probably loaded beyond what you could carry in some instances and surviving cr uh, uh, crash landings. Uh, I know you're a nerd when it comes to helicopters. Guilty as charged. I know you would appreciate the skills of these military helicopter pilots even more than someone who knows nothing about helicopters. Warning, though, some of the stories are very graphic. I uh, hope you and your family are doing well in this new normal. Uh, and go fuck yourself. Um, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. That's amazing. I, I, will, definitely, uh, I will definitely check that out. Um, I actually ran into a, a guy that flew helicopters in... Um, I think he flew him in the Middle East. I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, now that you're out, do you, you know, you got a pilot, you know, you still fly or whatever. And he goes, nah. He goes, I, the, the, I kind of lost my thrill for it. Once you, get, once you get shot at when you're up there, you kind of like being down here. <laughs> All right. Oh, and last week I was talking about the Seahawks. Forever I've been trying to find a picture of a Seahawk. I could never find one. And uh, then I saw someone on Barstool Sports saying they're not a real animal. And uh, but then a bunch of people, including this person, reached out, said Seahawks. And I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks here. And now we're talking about the bird here. Seahawks are another name for uh, an osprey. O-S-P-R-E-Y. I don't know. Let's 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 find out how to say that. So the next time I'm at a cocktail party and they bring up NFL football. Uh, it could be the Seattle Seahawks. You know, that's actually just another name for an osprey. And then they'll go, OK, douche. All right. How do you say this? Oh, wait. Osprey. Oh, Osprey. It's an Osprey. Seahawks are, are, another, are, Seahawks are another name for Osprey. Uh, hey, Billy, hey, Billy Bird Boy. My apology if I'm the 30th bird nerd to email you what a Seahawk is. Uh, you're, yeah, you're, that's about right, about 30 people. But heard you bitching about mascots on sep the September 28th podcast and needed to weigh in. Most of the times I'm not bitching. That's, I just have that tone in my voice. Uh, and Osprey is the bird that the Seattle Seahawks are named for. The Seattle Osprey. I can see why they chose Seahawks. Seahawks, Seattle Seahawks. C, C. Um, C, C, Rider. Um, Seahawks are just the common name for them. They mainly hunt fish and have evolved for this purpose. I got to tell you, they're a good-looking bird, especially for a hawk. They usually look, like, really pissed. This one just looks like, uh, I don't know annoyed but like kind of self-satisfied maybe just ate um that's good to know because there are there were a number of things you know there were for the longest because you couldn't look that shit up when you were a kid like i remember when i was a kid and i was watching um len bias the great len bias rest his soul when he was playing from Mar maryland and they were the the terrapins and i was like what the fuck is a terrapin you'd have to go all the way down to the goddamn library you know instead of just reaching down with your cancer causing phone, which is right next to your balls and looking up. What is a terrapin? You know, and then you can just wait for someone to ask. What is a terrapin? If you just looked it up, it's a turtle. What are you a fucking moron? You didn't look it up with your thumb in your pocket. Hmm? Sorry. Very dehydrated. I've been doing the elliptical all week. Uh, the bullet, the elliptical uh, forest cleaning. 
dear Bill, sucks I have to say this, but this is not a political email. I don't care who the hell you or anyone votes for. Hey, there's somebody enlightened. Forest maintenance is a large part of fire prevention. I volunteered in high schools with the same attitude. This is pointless. Why the fuck are we cleaning the forest? I just wanted to get outside to meet my required hours to graduate, so I did it anyways. Uh, I learned a lot, and it definitely changed my perspective about what it means to maintain the parks and how important it is uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, Dead brush is what causes fires to spread 10 times faster than it normally would. I understand that, but like in and around L.A., they do that. There's always crews of people cutting that shit down, trying to do the best they can. Okay, this isn't it isn't just it, like these fires have always happened out here. So the fires are not, you know, um, out of the ordinary. But like with the planet heating up, which the scientists tell me is happening. So I listen to them. We had the worst fires we've ever had. Um, I understand that you need to do this stuff. I'll continue. Um, it makes the fire really less rely less on the wind to spread. Um, the, the dangerous cycles in California of extremely healthy conditions turning to dead and dry is the largest factor. Um, I thought it was because we had humidity this year. They were talking about, we had all this humidity now, like w- weather has literally changed since I've been in fucking LA in 2007. It used to be a dry heat. You'd go outside and you felt like there was a God had a magnifying glass. He was between you and the sun and he was trying to burn the top of your head. But it wasn't like that East Coast uh, humid fucking weather. And now we have that. We have fucking mosquitoes and shit. It's really weird. Although I did hear the mosquitoes came over on some freight liner from fucking, I don't know, somewhere in the South Pacific. Who knows? Anyways, the majority of the fires started are man-made and within relative distance to man-made tra- trails and campsites. Um, I don't know. I, I was hearing that because the the weather conditions, there was a lot of lightning that starts at every fucking year. I know there was the gender neutral fucking or the general reveal thing. Anyway, it is the responsibility of the state to offset these man-made factors. I won't bullshit about power lines and translators, uh, transistors cause. Wait, I won't bullshit about power lines and transistors because I didn't have to deal with that. So I won't start blaming power companies. I guess what I'm saying is that we actually do need to clean our forests in a methodical way if we want to help slow the spread. I agree with that. Uh, But we also should probably look to different cleaner energy. You know, Um, I would go nuclear if you didn't have to bury that shit in the ground for fucking 9000 years. Um, I would we should embrace the sun and see how that works. I would go solar because no matter what we do, we're going to leave some sort of carbon footprint. So. That one seems to be the least. Like I said, just take all the old blue buds and say, hey, you can't do oil anymore, but now you own the sun. So you still have us all by the balls, right? Isn't that great? And uh, anyway, and you get all the money from the solar shit, okay? Is that okay? Can we do this now? Do you care about children anymore? All right, this is obviously could never prevent them all, but when it comes to defending homes, it makes a difference. I, I listen, I agree with, with all of that, okay? But um, that needs to be done. And then also we need to find a, we need to find cleaner ways to live. We need to recite. Well, all this shit we, we need to do that we know we need to do and we've been putting it off like a term paper, I think we should do. That is my point, okay? I hope these electric cars help. Um, I hope there's cleaner ways for airplanes to fly. I just hope all of that shit, we just sort of lessen the pollution that we're putting in there that from what the scientists are saying is heating up the planet and causing the normal California fire, fires to be even crazier. And uh, I don't know. And if you're just sitting there going, well, I don't live in California, so I don't give a fuck. California is, is letting you know what is coming for the rest of the states eventually if we keep doing what the fuck we're doing, according to scientists. So, um, I don't know. So, and then I know people are going to be like, well, you know, I can find just as much uh, scientific proof on the other side that suggests something completely different. It's just like, yeah, but at the end of the day, you're not a scientist, and neither am I. So I just choose to listen to the, you know, the accepted ones that the government tell me. Those, those are the ones telling me. I don't, I don't know. Well, maybe with global warming, that's like a political thing too. I don't know. Whatever. I'll just shut up. Why don't I just st- stick with comedy? All right. Cancel culture pussies of the 60s. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, what's up, Billy Red Rocks? <laughs> Under a blood red pubes there. Uh, I was watching an episode of The Twilight Zone that aired in the 1960s that made me think about modern day cancel culture. 
Um, it was about the creepy looking dude who wanted various random people fired because he just knew they were communists. Yeah, that was the, uh, they were probably doing an episode on the, the red scare. Um, you know, I would think that that's what they, the McCarthyism. Anyway, this dude wanted these people canceled more than someone who didn't receive. Wait, this dude wanted these people canceled more than someone who didn't receive direct eye contract from Ellen. Hey, look at that Ellen DeGeneres joke. Uh, with absolutely no evidence. Uh, it's sad, but I feel like if cancel culture existed 60 years ago, it will never go away. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I, it ebbs and flows. They're always trying to get rid of people various ways, shame them, shoot them. Uh, you know, discredit them, slander them. There's always just all kinds of ways that they, yeah, they're always trying to do that. I, I would agree with that. But I, I think in the past, though, it was people in power um, were trying to do it, where now it's just sort of, I guess they do have a power with social media. Um, it's really a crazy time. But, yeah, it's something human beings do. Anyway, let me finish reading this. Glad to hear you've been staying safe and not buying into the sea breeze preventing COVID bullshit. I've been working as a delivery driver throughout this entire pandemic. Congratulations. You kept your job, man. That's a big thing. Good for you. And listening to the Monday morning podcast and the Bill Burt podcast gets me through the day. If you come out to Minnesota anytime soon, I'll be sure to come out and support you from six feet away. Go fuck yourself. Well, that's great. I would love to go out to Minnesota. I'd love to be able to go back out on the road. I'm going to figure it out. I can't do it now because the show would be outside and it is Minnesota. It's going to start getting cold and I'm not Carl Eller or Jim Marshall or all those great Vikings that used to play outside. Um, all right, here we go. Cruise ship stories. Cruise ship stories. What's the deal? All right, cruise ship stories. Hey, Bill, I'm your biggest fan from North Africa. Get out of here. That's great. I've been watching your specials and podcasts for years. I'm from Tunisia. And I, you know what's funny? I could do a show in Tunisia right now in front of the same amount of people I'm doing in New York City. <laughs> and I used to work on board cruise ships. Luckily, I quit before you became a dictator, dictator and sunk my working place. Sunk my working place. Um, nine years of that shit, it's an absolute nightmare. I dealt with more complaints than Dr. Phil and Oprah combined. But some of the questions, bro, uh, sometimes I laugh. Sometimes I get brain farts. Sometimes I lose it. Here are my top five most ridiculous encounters I got while I am working on board a cruise ship. You're right. Those are the dumbest people. You know what? Hey, people, this is a great new segment. If you want to, like, whatever you do, if you work in the public, give me a top five, whatever your vocation is, dumbest things people said to you. And I know that if somebody's a park ranger out there in uh, Joshua Tree, they got one question for me when I asked one of the park rangers, where is the Joshua Tree? I thought there was just one. I didn't realize it was a species. Um, all right. Number one, top five dumb questions answered, asked on a cruise ship. Number one, captain made an announcement saying that tomorrow at 7 a.m. we will cross the equator line. Oh, no. This guy wakes up at 6 a.m., takes his coffee pot and goes to the helipad and kept looking at the sky. Oh, he didn't even look into the water. He looked into the sky. 7.15 a.m. came to... 7.15 a.m. came. He came to me complaining that he didn't see the equator line. Therefore, the captain misinformed him and demanded the compensation. I almost printed the Wikipedia page, but that shit would get me fired. Oh, my God. I remember when I was a kid, I thought the equator, I just pictured it as this, this big, like, almost like uh, black rubber tubing that would have, like, uh, fiber optic wire going through. That's how I pictured the equator. Um but I was also a kid. Number two, during a gay charter cruise, one gay complained that too many gays are hitting on him and he wants to get off. Uh, we were in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so hot. People won't leave me alone. God, get me off this boat. All right, number three. Oh, my God, Jesus Christ. A bunch of guys who want to fuck other guys all on there, and they're all guys. Can you imagine that? Guys will fuck anything. You stick them on a fucking boat and you inhale. Oh, my God. Um, number three, second day during the during uh, the crossing from Australia to the U to the U.S., this woman called me saying there is a penguin on her balcony. I said, Madam, that's probably because that's probably a bird because penguins don't fly. 
Oh, boy. She started screaming. I know a penguin when I see one. So I sent security, and it was just a seagull. Uh, that night she came uh, after dinner asking what happened to the bird. So I tried to be funny, and I said, uh, did you like your soup? Oh, God. <laughs> She didn't appreciate my joke, but her husband started laughing. And, of course, she asked uh, for my boss, and I got in trouble. Oh, wow. What a douche. I mean, talk about not having any sense of humor. You thought it was a fucking penguin. You know, what did he say it was? A seagull. Was it an osprey? Um, number four, a woman came running saying she saw some black creatures with red eyes swimming around the ship. I said, uh, okay, thanks for telling me. She started yelling. Ain't you going to send security to shoot him? Oh, boy. Jesus Christ, I'm fucking hallucinating. Um, number five. Uh, one poor bastard walked inside a sauna and found a dude blowing another dude. Oh. Came to me saying he can't forget what he saw and I should give him a free drink package to help him get over it. He actually said package after seeing what he just saw. Um, I honestly felt for him. I told him I can't do that, but I gave him a couple of bottles of wine after investigating. Uh, we found out about those gay dudes. Turned out one of them was married. I knew it. I knew it. Been traveling with his wife. That happens a lot. Uh, we asked what he was doing inside the sauna. He said, I was getting a foot massage from a stranger. Wow. And then he slowly moved up my leg. Yeah, I remember one time I, uh, I, I went to a gym here in New York and uh, they wanted all of this fucking ID and all of this shit. And I was giving, what the fuck? I got this man. give me the money, blah, blah, blah. I know what happened. Somebody ended up talking to the guy and he said that the other day they had caught a married dude blowing uh, a gay guy in the sauna. And when he got caught, he freaked out and, he, and his wife was out working out. And he said, please don't tell my wife. And he, I said, did you? He said, yeah, I had to. And I was thinking like, well, you didn't have to. But it, I get, you have to though. Because he's taking these risks and they're probably having unprotected sex. You know, this guy's out and about. I mean, if he was banging a woman, you know, you'd have to do the same thing, right? I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy world. Uh, I can write a book about th this shit, man. You should. Anyway, well, I hope uh, you, you don't back down your voice. You're the voice of the voiceless in this pussified world we live in. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Every, this, most people talk the way I fucking talk. Um, they just don't do it on TV. Uh, one more thing, Bill. Don't accept that dude's invitation to Saudi Arabia. You say the wrong thing about women, religions, or kings, or king, you're a goner. Uh, we can't afford to lose one of the last two comedians who don't give a flying fuck about triggered folks. That, that's you and Dave Chappelle. Wow. Anytime I get lumped in with the great Dave Chappelle, that's great. Peace and love. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for my one fan out there in Tunisia. Um, all right. Men suck too. Oh, here we go. Finally, the lady's writing in. Hey, Bill. Oh, it might be a gay dude. Who knows? Hey, Bill, love the podcast. Hope you and your family are doing great. I'm a lady listener. And I've been putting together this email for a while. Oh, see, see, women are smarter. Guys are just being, oh, fucking women suck. And just send it up. She, she's fucking, you know, like a paralegal here. Here we go. Several months ago, I was listening to one of your old podcasts where you encourage women to write in bashing men in order to even it out. Yeah, all right, cool. So since then, I've been writing things down that, uh, that I notice about men that I think are annoying or funny. Oh, this is great. The list is below. Thanks for the laughs. And as always, go fuck yourself. Okay. This is another great one. All right. Ladies, if you want to write in this shit, this is great. And if you have a fucking job where you deal with the public, I want to hear your top five dumbest things people said to you. All right. Um, the way men turn insecurity into anger. <laughs> oh, guilty as charged here. Example. He fucked up his parking job and is embarrassed, so now he has to rant about how cities never make parking spots big enough for trucks. Oh, fuck. That is totally me, except you said truck. I mean, I got an old truck, but yeah. I bitch about my car because of the cameras and shit. Uh, you know, it is embarrassing because I used to be really good at parking. I used, to be, I used to be great at backing up. I, I don't know what it is. I cannot use the backup camera. I don't understand it. I can't tell if those yellow lines are my tires or represent the side. I think it's the side of the car. I have no fucking idea. 
And I always flip up. All right. Uh, we have to call erectile dysfunction ED because men can't bear to hear the actual words. Uh, we don't call yeast infections YIs. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. But not to get technical, just because you have a yeast infection, your pussy still works, right? ED. Um, erectile dysfunction. Uh, you always say women enjoy hooking up too. I want to set the record straight. A woman hooking up with a guy is like a group of friends deciding to go to Times Square for New Year's. Um, it seems like it'll be a fun, crazy night, but it's really boring and disappointing, and you feel pressured to act like you're enjoying yourself the whole time. Um, well, then, I, I don't know. Well, that one, I just feel bad for you. You never just had, like, a fucking, you know, connection sexually with somebody that didn't lead to a relationship? <laughs> so you just lay there going, oh, wow, we... <laughs> <laughs> um, that just made me sad. The other two are funny. Okay, well, I, well, then I wouldn't, you don't sound, like some people are like relationship people, so then don't do that. I mean, I'm basically a relationship person. I'm just scared of them. All right, going camping. Okay, going camping, they become dictators of the campsite. Have to prove to everyone they know how to start a fire and set up a tent. Yeah, I would see that. You got to. That's, that's some guy shit. Um, yeah, because what if, what if a bear comes? You know, if a bear comes, I know I have to put that you behind me. Like somehow I can fight off a bear. What I'm really hoping is, is I, I got an extra couple extra pounds on me. So when he finishes me off, he's full and will leave you alone. Um, not getting out of the left lane when there's a line of cars behind them because they can't take the fact that there are people who want to go faster than them. Is this all the same guy? This guy sucks in bed. He's a cunt at the campground. I hate those fucking people. I hate those people. My only thing I don't like on the highway is if you fucking drive 90 miles an hour and pass me on the right. If I see you coming up on me, I get the fuck out of the way. Uh, the younger me used to try and speed up and stay in, in front of you and break check and do stupid shit like that. But now I just, hey, you know, it's like you need to get somewhere. Good on you. You're going to meet the cops sooner than I do. So they'll be writing you a ticket so they won't care that I'm only doing 75. All right. A lot of men consider it a compliment to tell a girl she's cool enough to hang with. Uh, to hang with the guys like, oh, fuck, really? I'm in? Oh, my God. If you say that, that's hilarious. Um, but it is a compliment. You know? It is a compliment. But that's the exact. And you, they're, both, you're, they're both right. The man is right. It is a compliment. Yeah, you know, you, you can actually hang out with you. You're fucking cool. That, that is a rare thing. But the fact that you would think to say, oh, fuck, really? Am I in? That's why you're cool. Because <laughs> if you said that, every guy there would start laughing. Because that's all we do to each other. Is you, what you're doing there is you're breaking balls. Which I don't know about you guys. The way I'm wired, like that is the most endearing thing somebody can do is come up and just start making fun of me. You know, obviously if you're doing it like from a hateful place, I don't enjoy that. It hurts my feelings. But if you're just trashing me, like all oh, this shit, right? Billy Red Balls, all of that fucking, all I, oh, this guy likes what I do. All right. Guys act like uh, they're just so much less dramatic than girls, but they just sweep their interpersonal problems under the rug and it slowly and slowly let it erode the friendships while also talking shit to their other friends. Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. You know what? If you were on the family feud right now, I don't even like whatever you just did. One, two, three, four, five. I think you, you nailed the top five or six or whatever. You didn't get answer number 10 yet. You're crushing these. Um, the way that men don't like, uh, don't know, or the way that men don't know what's bothering them. Um, personally speaking, I know what's bothering me. I just don't want to tell you because then you're going to be like, well, let's talk about it. And then I have to face my feelings. <laughs> Video games. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with that. I got it. I really have issues with people in their thirties and forties that are still playing video games. And they got like a headset and all of that dumb shit. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I left those. Wait a minute. No, no, that's not true. I played Grand Theft Auto in my 30s. Grand Theft Auto 3, whenever the fuck that came out. I played that so much that I literally, I've told this before. I just, one day I was like, I have to stop. And I went and I unplugged everything that could be unplugged off my PlayStation 2. And just put it in the back of my closet. Because I knew that I'd never be able to figure out how to plug it back in again. Because... Um, oh, this is funny. I actually got that PlayStation 2 from a buddy of mine 
who was really like this woman and he bought her a bunch of nice shit and all she got him was like a fucking hoodie and he got so mad he took her gifts back and one of them was this PlayStation 2. <laughs> so then he sold it to me for like a hundred bucks. So I didn't have the instructions. And what was funny was like a few months later, I ran into the woman that he liked. She was just like, you know, you have my PlayStation 2, right? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and she told me the story. Anyways, uh, men love mentioning how long it's been since they cried. Dude, I don't even remember the last time I cried. Uh, yeah, that's a bad thing. That's what actually kills men. Because um, we deny a, arguably the biggest healing emotion there is. You got to do it. You got to let it out. Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. I don't know who this woman is, but I'd say, you know, she knows guys pretty good. Learning to play the guitar a little and then telling people they play guitar. <laughs> Skateboarding. Uh, pre pressing dick against ass in club. Well, you'd have to get, have a dick to understand that. Uh, they get those, why a guy would do that. If you had a dick, you'd be doing the same thing. Uh, they get those tires that are too big for their truck. Um, oh, the ones that stick out. Yeah. Those guys that are intentionally, uh, those guys that intentionally make their cars louder. What's that about? Who's that for? Um, that's for people who love cars. I mean, there's certain people that just want to do it. I mean, you don't think it sounds cool? I think it sounds cool. Motorcycles, it's so you hear them because a lot of times you can't see them and so you don't hit them. But um, I don't know. I, I understand. Like the one, I, I like the muscle car sound. I like a, a ballsy truck sound, but I don't like those uh, those ones that they put on the Hondas and stuff. They're that high pitch. sounds like a lawnmower. I don't understand those. Um, or they sound like muted. I don't know. All right. Breaking shit while drunk. <laughs> Uh, don't know how to buy gifts. I'm guilty of that. They think women can't tell when they're fake laughing or fake interested. Uh, they make up 99% of people. Oh, they make up 99% of people who call into sports talk radio. Uh, what the Patriots need to do is, oh my God, I fucking hate those shows. Uh, tribal tattoos. I want to say uh, tribal tattoos went out in the 90s, didn't they? That's what I picture when I think of tribal tattoos. Well, I, I don't know who you are, man, but you fucking crushed it. I was guilty of at least 80% of that. Um, other than video games and skateboarding, I think I was guilty of all of that. Well, here we go. Here's some more modern scams. And if, if you guys know scams that are out there, please give everybody the heads up. I love this. Modern scam. Hey, Billy Ballbrains, I heard you were talking about scams old and new on the October 5th podcast, and I wanted to tell you about a new scam that people are doing these days. All right, I was on the dating app hinge there's a dating app called hinge all i can think of is unhinged is that where all the psychos go anyways uh hinge and saw a hooker on there her profile said who wants to fuck dm me for rates on snapchat oh boy oh is this the cops so i did just that it was 200 bucks for three hours so i thought about it for a few weeks and then went ahead to book her she asked for a half hour up front so i sent her a hundred right then Oh, no. Then she put me in touch with her boss who asked for 300 refundable deposit for the girl's booking code. It was supposed to be sent back to me after the, de after the deed. So I sent it like an idiot. Then she asked for a 625 deposit to guarantee safety, which I also sent like a dumbass. Dude, at this point, they're just going to keep going. So I sent that like the dumbass I am. Then she asked for 925 so sh she will be safe in your arms. I finally realized it was a scam and I was out 1025 bucks. Fuck me. So for all your followers, listen, listeners who suck at hitting on chicks, watch out for those scams. Oh, dude, don't fuck hookers, man. Don't fuck hookers. That's never the answer. All right? You're going to feel like shit afterwards and then that's somebody's daughter who didn't raise her. All right? The whole thing is to, you don't want to be a part of that world. Anyway, also, if anyone knows how to find people based on their... Zeal, Z E L L E, Zelly, uh, or Venmo accounts, please let me know. Thanks and go fuck yourself. All right, well, thanks for letting people know about that shit. Uh, yeah, don't ever fucking. <laughs> don't ever DM money to a hooker. She ain't showing up. Um, you and video games. All right, dear Billy Bullshitter. First of all, let me say fuck you. All right, fair enough. And then go fuck yourself. I had recently considered writing in and talking shit to you about your thoughts on video games. 
I did I ever say they were? Did I say they were? I mean, I probably did. I was just saying I can't handle them. I'm going to lose my life. They're too good now. With your virtual reality thing, you can talk to other people. You don't have to leave your fucking house. I can't, I can't deal with that. All right, but maybe I maybe I shouldn't video game people. I have no idea. I have a tendency to piss people off if you haven't noticed. All right, let's see here. What do we got here? Um, uh, what the hell was I on this? Okay, because I was listening to one of your older podcasts where you were flapping your gums about it, video games, but decided not to. However, you've once again sullied one of my hobbies, and I can no longer stand for this, sir. All right, I like it. He's slapping me with the white glove. Okay, let me have it. Here we go. Video games are a perfectly normal pastime. Just because you struggle with technology as much as I struggle with finding the clit <laughs> does not make it a childish thing to do. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, you're playing video games. It is kind of silly. I, I stand by that. It is kind of silly past a certain age to be playing video games. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's maybe, uh, maybe I'm not progressive. Um, anyway, am I over here flipping... You shit because you like to bang around on your little drum set like you're getting ready for the school talent show. Oh, look at you. Um, I would actually argue that. I'm actually learning how to play drums. It's good for my, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual skill, sir. I will say that. As opposed to sitting there clicking your fucking... I mean, I guess playing asteroids is, is also a skill. All right. This isn't fair to him if I'm going to trash him the whole... I'm going to let him get all this shit out. I'm not going to go Trump here and interrupt him. So let me read this again. Am I here flipping you shit because you like to bang around in your little drum set like you're getting ready for your, the school talent show? No. While I may not sink all of my time into playing games, I still enjoy playing them for several hours on end if I have the time. I go to work every day. I got my college degree. I pay my taxes. Oh, this is the indignant shit. I do everything I'm supposed to do, and I think everyone else that's doing what they're supposed to do and still likes playing video games uh, gets a pass. If I had to guess, you probably picture a gamer as some greasy, fat, 40-year-old, pimpled loser that eats bagel bites, drinks Mountain Dew, Code Red, and plays games all day long. Um, uh, not 100%. No, I just, I mean, all my friends who play video games aren't like that, I don't think. Anyway, yes, those people need to grow up, but not us industrious, hardworking people. You fucking asshole. It's not an ex I'm not an expert on the topic and in no way qualified to have a say on this matter, but that's never stopped no one from giving her given one. All right. To be fair, uh, I'm only 26 year old. I'm only a 26 year old dope, so I can't predict whether or not I'll still enjoy playing games from 10 years from now. But I have to strike while the iron is hot and stick up for people because out of my own arrogance, I'm somehow that important. Um, Dude, you're crushing with the self-deprecation because now I can't trash your back. That's tremendous. Why don't you just find your own business? Why don't you just mind your own business over there on that dumb elliptical of yours with the rest of your goofy, the goofy people from the Middle Ages, and we'll mind our own business over here playing make-believe in some virtual fantasy land. Deal? No, go fuck yourself. I'm a comedian. I'll continue to make fun of you. Stop acting like some fucking hurt little snowflake here. I don't like video games. You know what? That's one more PlayStation available for you to go play. I will make fun of fucking anything I want to make fun of, but I respect that you're, you know, as long as you're living a life, I don't care if you're not living a life. I don't care if you're some greasy fat fuck who still lives at home with your parents. I think it's funny past a certain age to sit there playing a video game where you're pretending to go to war. It's just funny to me. I don't know why. I think it's funny, but I also get up upset about sports and shit, which I also know is absolutely, uh, is absolutely ridiculous. But um, the real thing is though, I, I quit playing video games I was uh, older than this 26-year-old guy. I was like in my early 30s, and I was playing um, Grand Theft Auto 3 and Siphon Filter 2. And they were so fucking amazing. And I was nowhere in this business. And rather than working on jokes and shit like that, I was sitting there. Maybe just being a stand-up comic where you have the whole day off, where you can either write a screenplay or play fucking eight hours of, of uh, going on vid vigilante like shooting sprees. Um Medal of Honor was another one. Listen, I'm a, I, I love video games the same way I love booze, but I couldn't handle either one of them. So God bless you if you can dip in for a couple of fucking hours, but I got kids, I can't fucking do it. So, But I do, there is something funny to me about somebody in their 40s playing Grand Theft Auto 58. I mean, there, there is, it's, it's, it's funny. Sorry. The same way you picture me downstairs playing drums in my garage 
that's funny, right? It's fucking, you know, so you make fun of me. For, you can still make fun of me for that because I'm not going to stop making fun of fucking people that play video games. It's just shit past a certain age. It's just funny to me. All right. Uh, GMC Motorhome, originally owned by NFL Films. What the fuck? I heard you were looking for one of these. I've got over 10,000 invested. Needs work. Want a good home for it. If interested, let me know. It gives me the phone number. I'm too old and broke to fix it. I know you can do it justice. Make an offer. And there was some sort of link here. Oh, I didn't get any of the pictures. Oh, maybe, you know something? Wait, hang on a second. Let me look at this. Let me look at this thing. Oh, yeah, here's a great thing to try to sell to my wife. Hey, honey, you know how we never go camping or anything? You know that, right? You know this? I'm doing the sketch from Saturday Night Live. Um, where is it? Live reads? MM content, modern scam, video games. All right. I don't have the link to look at it, sir or ma'am. I'll have to check that out. Uh, owned by NFL Films. That's amazing. Does it have the NFL logo somewhere on it? Sewn into the uh, vinyl seats. All right. Anyways, let's plow ahead. Virgin Boyfriend. Okay, here we go. Virgin Boyfriend over there. Uh, dearest Bill, uh, you're a fucking legend. Oh, thank you. I don't think that's true, but thank you. Anyways, anyways, I'm an 18-year-old lady. I love hearing from the ladies. And I've been dating my 19-year-old boyfriend for the past seven months. For the most part, the relationship is all fine and dandy, except for one key factor. There is no sex. He's a virgin and constantly says he doesn't feel ready. I, of course, want to respect this, but it's been seven months. Before dating him, I was relatively promiscuous and was... As, I guess having sex far more regularly than this. I have no shame in saying I enjoy sex, nor should you. Don't let fucking people, you know, the church or guys or any of that, fuck that. Go out and have your fun, be safe, as long as you're having a good time. Um, hence, this is kind of a dilemma I find myself in now. This sounds grossly narcissistic, uh, but it's quite evident I'm way out of his league. No, maybe you just know your value. I mean, you've been waiting around seven months. What the fuck? Um, I... F you, I uh, Okay, I got some opinions on this. Let me finish this. I constantly have guys throwing themselves at me, and it's going to be hard to resist not hooking up with these fine men when I'm being deprived of a sexual relationship with my boyfriend. I would feel horrible of giving him an ultimatum of sex or we break up, but I don't know what else to do. Please enlighten me with your grown man wisdom. Uh, go consensually fuck yourself. Um, I think you need to find out why. Um, there's a number of different roads this could go. Okay. Uh, he could have been molested. Um, he could have had some religious upbringing that shamed him. He could be gay. There's a bunch of things, but I think you need to clear the air and he needs to start actively talking about other than you're just saying, I'm not ready yet. Um, he's not even kissing you. Like he needs to, you know, if he's going to keep you, he needs to start actively communicating with you, maybe talking to somebody and figure out what is, what's going on with him. And then you, all you have to do is see what your feelings are for this person. Do you want to hang around and let, you know, for this person to undo whatever the fuck their problem is? Because, you know, the reality is, is when you're single and you're trying to find out who you're supposed to be with, you're 18 years old. I don't know. Are you going to marry this guy? Like, I don't know. You got to be selfish. In a way, but I mean, but you also shouldn't be hurting people, you know, um, I would try to help this person. Um, as far as like, try to get them to open up and give them some avenues to open up. And as they open up, it's only fair that you open up and you don't have to, you don't have to do the ultimatum, but you just have to say, Hey, I got needs too. And I'm attracted to you. And I would like to get on with this. I don't say it that quickly, but you know what I mean? In a nice way. But um, you shouldn't feel bad about any of the feelings that you're having. Um, and he shouldn't feel ashamed of what he's feeling about. You guys just need to talk about it. And you need to set some sort of game plan that you can both live with to try to move it ahead. And if you guys can find a game plan that works for both of you, you'll stay together. If you don't, good luck to him. There's no reason to be a jerk, you know, and just move on. Or work through it. That's basically it. But everything that you're feeling is valid. Everything that that person's feeling is valid. People's feelings are valid, even if they don't agree with your feelings. So you guys get all your feelings out on the table. You look at all the cards. You try to figure it out. If you can, you do. If you can't, you don't. But there's no hard feelings. 
All right? That's the most adult way to do it. So good luck with that. And, um, yeah, you seem like a really cool person. Um, all right, here we go. Okay, re-dumb work experiences. Okay, we got, we got a little trend going on. Here we go, dumb experiences. Dear Billy No Booze, um, I own a small boutique liquor store in Denver. I have a terrific loyal customer base, but every now and then I get guests that are not used to our style of shop. Uh, you can see it in their face. I swear to God, I literally, I don't know why, I was just thinking of this sketch that I wanted, that I thought was, like, not every sketch makes the show, and I was just thinking uh, how that would have played out. Sorry, let me go back so I can actually pay attention. I own a small boutique liquor store in Denver. I have a terrific, loyal customer base, but every now and then I get guests that are not used to our style of shop. You can see it in the face the moment they walk in. They are expecting a regular old package liquor store. Uh, oh, that's a great name. That's what, that's what they called it back when I was a kid, going down to the packy. Um, it's a beautiful shop with 600 different craft beers, 200 wines, 70 bourbons, etc., etc. Yeah, this is for like uh, connoisseurs of alcohol. Uh, and somebody's coming in, what, trying to buy a 12 of fucking Bud Light kid. Uh, here I am. Here, oh, here are my dumbfounded encounters I have had in the three years since I bought the shop. I think that would be such a cool thing to own. A little boutique liquor store that has all this high-end booze. I always thought that that would be fucking cool. Um, number one, just a couple weeks ago, a woman about 50 years old or so came in and said, I was sent here to buy some blow. <laughs> I responded, I'm sorry, what was that? She put her fingers to her mouth as if she was going to smoke a cigarette. I said, do you mean weed? She had a tepid look on her face like I was her parent and quietly said, yes. Uh, Ma'am, there is a dispensary at the end of the block, and don't ask them for blow. Just tell them you need some weed. Oh, that's hilarious. That's clearly not a drug user. Was sent there by somebody who was maybe too fucked up. <laughs> oh, boutique liquor store. Here's another dumb question. Oh, this is right. Top five stupid questions. This is, this is what the segment is. The top five, if you work for the public... Um, deal with the public in your job. The top five dumb questions. I threw myself under the bus for the park ranger out in uh, Joshua Tree. I went out to Joshua Tree and asked a park ranger, where is the Joshua Tree? Um, don't ask him that. There's a bunch of jo That's like being in Massachusetts saying, where is the oak tree? Um, okay, number two, do you sell scotch tape? Number three, do you have any whiskey? Uh, I have an entire wall of whiskey. It's the first thing you see when you walk in the door. Uh, number four, is this a real store? I will never forget this question. <laughs> That's probably somebody just always goes to Costco. Uh, number five, are you here? I get this question at least once a week. It blows me away every time. I'm standing here. My door is open. Unless you know something, I don't. I am here. Uh, what? They can't see you? Is that what they do? Are they? I don't know. Anyway, all the best to you and Nia and the little ones. Uh, we'll see you at the Comedy Works next time you are around. Oh, that's cool. I love a high-end liquor store. I used to. I still love them. That's the fucking best. All right, girl calls me fat, but she gained twice as much weight. Oh, wow. Hey, Billy Barada had, I had some Barada. Yep. You can call me Jordan. All right. Me and my girlfriend, no kids, have been together for 11 years. I am 6'2", and she is 5'7". When we started, started dating, we were still teenagers, and I was about 175 pounds, and she was about 115. I am now 220 pounds, and she is 200. Uh, lately, she, she is saying that I am getting fat. 220 pounds is not light, but I am still pretty okay for a guy that is 6'2", and people never think I'm over 200 pounds. Yeah, but still, dude, you can't walk around with that kind of weight. That, that really hastens how long you're going to live, belly fat. Um, I have a bit of a beer belly, and I love eating steak. When she told me I'm getting fat, I said, quote, I know I gained some weight. We both did. Maybe we should go out more like we used to. She right away said, oh, so you think I'm fat? Yeah. She set a little bear trap for you because she's not happy with what she looks like. I mean, she almost doubled her fucking weight. Oh, I'm superimposing me because I know how much I, how much I beat myself up. Um, anyways, I told her. No, and that I find her sexy and love her. She said that I gained more than her than she ever did, and I should eat healthier. Oh, my God. Yeah, see what she's projecting here. She's basically saying a bunch of shit to you, and then you can't say any shit back to her. 
Oh, so you think I'm fat? You should have been like, you just said that I'm fat. You just said I'm getting fat. You know, you think I'm fat? Yeah, you're fat. I'm fat. We're fat. We need to do something about this shit. Anyway, I told her, no, I didn't find, you know, I think she's sexy and I love her. Uh, she said that I gain more. But dude, you, all right. If you're going to marry her and have kids, if she's already like fucking 50 pounds overweight, she's really, there's a lot of health risks to that, I, I, I believe. Uh, she said that I gain more than she ever did and I should eat healthier. This is coming from someone who prefers McDonald's over a steakhouse. Yeah, she's in it. She has the addiction right now is when you eat this fucking food that they have in this country. Um, the same way a drug addict doesn't want to do drugs. The sickness just takes over. You can literally get that sickness craving sugar and salt and bad food. Speaking of that, did you see Ireland subway uh, subway sandwiches that fucking in Ireland? They are saying they are not legally allowing subway to say that they're Bread is bread because there's so much sugar in it. It's not bread anymore. And you watch these fucking assholes at Subway. Rather than stop serving that fucking sugary shit, they're going to go after politicians and line their fucking pockets so they can still call it bread. It's fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, but it's funny. They'd have more chances of getting in trouble if they told jokes. <laughs> Anyways, I said... Um, I said, knowing the numbers, I think you gained a little more, but that's fine. Like I said, you are sexy, and I want you and love you. You said that after you said the other shit? I'm sure she wasn't happy with that. Maybe we should just both go out more and have more fun, if you know what I mean. Since then, our sex life dropped to an all-time low, and I feel like she doesn't feel attracted to me anymore. Also, weight has never been an issue before. Since then, I lost about 15 pounds. Good man. She didn't even notice or won't say anything about it, at least. Yeah, she might be feeling bad about herself and she's taking it out on you. It seems she's still gaining weight. It's starting to hang around her belly and hips. Whether I try to talk to her about it, uh, talk to her about my feelings or our sex life, she gets really defensive and mad, and I don't know what to do about it anymore. I love this woman to death and just want to be happy together, fat or not, although I prefer at least to be healthy. Uh, what would Billy Bald Balls do? Please help. Thank you and go fuck yourself. Um... I would just say to her, just tell her you need to talk. And I would sit down and tell her that you love her and that you want to be with her. But, you know, like any relationship, there comes times we have to sit down and talk. And this is one of them. And I would just tell her how you're feeling and just tell her what you want to do and how it makes you feel when she, the sex life. It's like you told me that I was getting fat and then. We had that conversation, and now you're not having sex with me. I feel like you're not attracted to me anymore. Is that the truth? Is that the case, I would say? And then listen to what she says. And um, then you just basically have to tell her what you would like the two of you to do, which is to live a more healthy lifestyle. I want to live a more healthy lifestyle with you. And um, see what she says. And just tell her how you're feeling and tell her what you want and what you want the two of you to do. And leave it at that. And if she gets upset and she cries and do all of that type of stuff, just remain calm. Say, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not insulting you. I just want to, I just feel like we need to communicate here. I feel like there's something going on. I'm open to all options and see how that goes. And if she, um, I, I really think that she sort of just, I don't think she's happy with herself. And I don't think it's you. I think it's her. And, um, you know, that's, it's a hard fucking road when you're on a road, you don't want to be on and you don't know how to get off of it. And it makes you hate yourself. And then you're ashamed of yourself. And then the walls come up and then you, Cap, you can lash out at people and stuff like that. So you, I, I think it's going to be m more than one conversation to try and get through this. So you're going to have to be really patient. This is a tough one. This is probably one of the toughest ones. If the woman in your life is putting on weight and you know she's not happy about it and she's being super fucking defensive. I mean, that's literally like there's a wild animal. I saw this one. It was a fucking mountain lion stuck in a bear trap and these guys were trying to free it while this thing was trying to fucking defend itself. It's, it was 
it's like what I'm trying to help you in the mountain lion didn't understand it is essentially what you're dealing with here. And I think women deal with it. You know, if a guy's like, you know, he can't get it up or something like that, that's going to cause a guy to start doing the fucking mountain lion <laughs> in the bear trap fucking thing. So, um, yeah, dude, just know you got your work cut out for you here. It's going to be more than one, um, conversation. And then also know that your feelings are valid and you, express them and she should hear them and she should not be what she's doing. She shouldn't be doing to you. That's not fair to you. All right. And, um, she's hurting herself by continuing to gain weight. It's just, it's not going to be, you can eat your way into being a diabetic and that whole fucking nightmare, or you can just turn the ship around now while you're young and, and, you know, it's a great thing to do. Like, uh, me and my wife just started getting back in into like working out together, which is fucking awesome. Just basically going for walks. And once you have kids, you know, it's hard. You don't have a lot of time, but it's a, it's a great bonding thing. Like, all right, let's do this. And she pushes me, I push her or whatever. And it's, it's, it's a fun, it can be a real fun thing to do. You just gotta, you know, try and sell them on it. That's all. Um, so anyways, all right. Uh, okay. That's the podcast. Um, what a weekend. And uh, thank you guys. I didn't even thank you guys. My head's spinning so much. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I, I stayed offline. Because I, I need to just stay level. You know what I mean? I can't be reading a bunch of good shit. I can't be reading a bunch of negative shit. I did what I did. Some people like it. Some people don't. You know, there's a million comics out there. If, if you like it, keep watching me. If you don't like it, don't don't watch me. I understand. No big deal. So um, I, I haven't, but I just really appreciate, like, all the emails that I got, how excited and happy you guys were for me. That was just it was the gig of my life and um, everybody over SNL could not have made it easier. It was just from the, the second I got over there to when I left that place, um, it was just, it was just the greatest experience I've had. So I will never forget it. I will never forget it. And um, I will be watching next week. Issa Rae is up next. And uh, I saw a few of the hosts that got coming up after that. <clears throat> it just keeps getting better. So, that is it, everybody. That is the podcast. I will talk to you. Uh, I'll check in on you on Thursday. All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll see you. Let's get to some of the questions. Um, overseas point of view. Um, dear Billy, do Americans know how crazy they are when it comes to believing their own government's propaganda? Yeah, well, maybe someday we can be like you and not believe your government's propaganda. Go fuck yourself. I know we're I know we're we're, we're in a crazy time over here. Everybody realizes that. All right. And what you're doing is you're going on and you're watching videos of the dumbest mouth breathing fucking Americans. And you think they're all like that. They're not. OK, we know we're living in a fishbowl over here. What country are you from? All right. You speak about your news stations that have members of your own government's intelligence agencies telling people things with no facts or documents almost every day. My country has experienced a CIA back coup in the last 20 years. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have gone in this hard with this person. This isn't anything new to your country's foreign policy. Uh, no, it isn't. It's humorous watching the U.S. trick their own people with the same tactics they use to create militant uprisings. Okay, touche. These strategies are, are as old as time and a poor understanding of history is the blame. Uh, uh, no, it isn't. It isn't. It's the fact that everybody is watching TV and that's what's being spewed at them. And if in your country, if they were doing that to you, which I'm sure they are, you guys are in a bubble. The problem with now is you should have dipped in, say you're from another country that got oppressed by us and you, you should try to be building bridges with us so we can then stop yelling and being afraid and then look at our leaders and question what the fuck they're doing. All you did with your beginning was put me on the defensive to defend my country. All right. Oh, God. All right. Sorry. Here we go. Um, so it's you enjoy watching the, our country go down the shitter. So what am I supposed to feel bad about yours? I still do. All right. These strategies are as old as the, the, inter the international community deemed your Russia story as false. This is probably a Russian bot here, as well as the U.S. domestic courts. If you don't believe me, please read any international journalist who has no ties to any intelligent agency. Well, if you can find me that person, I will read it. Uh, despite this, your no news focuses on things instead of your military sprawl. Yeah, dude, everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. What are we going to do? They have the guns. We don't. I mean, we're all, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's a big country, buddy. 
We're trying over here. Okay, you never prosecute any of your politicians. And it is very clear that this will make economy expert. What? Uh, wait. It will make it easier for you. Uh, for your, you to continue to be weakened from the inside. Absolutely, I agree. I am not an economy expert, but here in my country, one of the quickest ways our, our system was destabilized was the excessive spending. Oh, dude, I mean, you're 20 years late on this one. Do you think Americans are just ignorant, or do you think they're just too dumb to know they're being lied to? Um, well, I mean, you just kind of... No, I don't. I think I think every country... The, the leader is lying to you and painting a rosier picture and saying that what they're doing is great and what the other people want to do is bad. Um, I, I don't think politics is unique in our country. I think this is what they do everywhere. And I think if you have the military sprawl that we do and you fuck with so many other countries, people hate you and they focus on you. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to start naming other countries, but other countries, you know, aren't, aren't exactly. This is a weird time, dude. So, yeah, I know we're completely fucked up. Uh, you kind of trashed us. You offered no solutions. Um, here's the deal. The people in this country are just like the people in your country. OK, everybody wants to walk around, feel safe, get a sandwich, find love, have a couple of kids, maybe, and just be OK and know that their kids are going to be OK. That's what everybody wants. OK, so we're no different than from where, wherever you're from. All right. And as far as all of that other stuff, I mean. Just how life has changed. So fast, and I'm not talking about the pandemic with technology. And 24 hour news networks and all of this type of shit and then deregulating rules of ownership of media where all of a sudden that you are basically only getting the viewpoint of a very small amount of people. It's really easy to manipulate people. And, you know, not for nothing, you know, every time there's a war, both sides dehumanize the other people. And they say still all of that shit that the terrorists talk about, that we're infidels and all of the, oh, whatever the fuck that means. It's like, I'm not, an I'm not an infidel, I'm a fucking jerk off. This is just where I was born. I'm trying to get through the fucking week and pay my bills like everybody else. And they just build up all of this shit. I remember back in World War II, there's footage of um, Japanese women throwing their kids off a cliff and jumping off a cliff too when they saw the American troops because their propaganda said that we would eat them if they were caught. Um, you know, and we said all kinds of fucking crazy racist shit about people uh, that we're going to go bomb and blow up because if they didn't, I guess people would be like, why are you dropping explosives on fellow human beings? Like, I'll be honest with you. I cannot believe in 2020 that war is still legal. You know, I get having a gun to defend yourself in your house, especially if you live in the middle of nowhere. You know, by the time the cops get there, whatever was going to happen was going to happen. So I understand people that want to do that. But this whole fucking thing of like, hey, we think this and you think that you don't think what we think. Oh, you won't let us come in there and take advantage of you. So now we're going to just kill more of your people than you can kill of ours, so then you'll bow down to us, is, um, I don't know. It's so funny, this whole progressive time that we're supposed to be in. Nobody's fucking with war. It's nuts. And as far as all of that shit about the economic thing, like, you know, the second we went over to the Middle East and had no exit plan, no exit strategy, he's got weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I guess he didn't. I mean, so now what? So we just stay? Well, we destabilized it. Now we can't leave you fucking cunts. I don't know. I blame bankers and the oil companies for all of this shit. That's what I do. And I've said it forever. You just give the give the oil company the sun. Just say that's yours. And we'll all switch to fucking solar power, even if at the end of the day throwing out the old solar shit is not as good, is 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 not as even if it isn't as clean as oil and coal and all that shit, at least we can just leave people in the Middle East alone. And let them solve their own fucking problems and, and just get out of there. Save a bunch of fucking money. I don't know why they don't just do that. Um, they're all fucking focusing on the goop there. All right. Workplace issues. Workplace issues. Um, hey there, bald Boston Billy Ball Saga. Uh, recently, I've been promoted to work to shop manager. Congratulations. In the, pa in the past, I managed a team of 20-year-old of warehouse workers and rocked it. I'm 35. 
They looked up to me and as an adult, a man of great knowledge, life experience, and wealth. With the promotion, well, Jesus, uh, that sounds great. With the p promotion, my direct reports are now a bunch of bald, ball saggers like yourself. Well, into their, well into their 50s. Um, great at what they do and great guys. But I can feel the tension already from them uh, when I am giving them a task. Like, how do you think I should approach gaining their respect as a boss? Oh, so now you're 35 and you're, you're managing these curmudgeons. Uh, gain their respect as a boss. Don't take any shit from them is what I would do. Don't be an asshole and don't get drawn into any sort of name calling or fucking biggest dick contest or any of that shit, that ego crap. Just, you just got to keep your cool. And I'll read the rest of this. I have thought about sucker punching one of them at the water cooler, though effective, likely not the best career move. Okay, so I'm sensing that they're not respecting you. I thought about constant praise and positive affirmation, i.e. treating them like a child who has done good. I have also thought about sitting them around one by one and asking what change they want to see. I'm only three days into this job and tried none of the above yet. Um, uh, in all seriousness, I really care about my job, love my work, love this company and just want to do well in this new role. Seeing as you are around their age and as abrasive as they are, how would you want a young, handsome punk like myself to lead you? Okay. First of all, dude, you're not young. You're 35. <laughs> I guess what we would consider you young. I mean, I would consider you young. Maybe you're saying it that way. Um, well, I'm not a good example of a 50-year-old. Uh, I'm self-employed and really don't have a real job. I mean, I act like a jerk-off and get paid for it. I mean, so I'm in a good mood a lot of the time. Um, I would guess that one of them wanted the position that you got, and you got it instead. So they're probably acting like a bunch of real housewives and maybe talking shit about you. What I think you need to do is you need to lead by example. Okay? Don't let them get under your skin. Let them say, I mean, you have, you are their boss. They have to listen to you. So what you have to do is you got to handle yourself like a man because they're probably already thinking, all right, this guy's a fucking millennial. He's going to be overly sensitive. He's going to be that. This is what I would do. I would, you know, I keep them in check. They want to, they want to cross a couple of lines or whatever. Just show that you can, you're a, you're a fucking guy that can, you know, take their bullshit or whatever. But like, there's no reason for you to fucking adjust to them. You know what I mean? Uh, what I would do is I would, I would tow the company line and, handle yourself respectfully and handle them respectfully. Anything beyond that, they can go fuck themselves. And um, once they see that you're not budging, because they're just testing you to see if you're going to be like the substitute teacher that they can fuck around with. Um, yeah, you don't have to name call and just be like, you know, I'll send your fucking ass upstairs fast and make your fucking Titex spin. You don't need to do any of that shit. Just don't take any of their shit. Don't flinch. And, uh, you know, I would, I, and, and I would never belittle any of them in front of the other ones. At that point, you got to come in the office and they'd just be like, all right, off the record, what the fuck is your problem? You know, I maybe can't talk like that in the office anymore. That's how they used to do it. Anyway, good luck with that though. All right. There young and handsome 35 year old. All right. My mother is going to kill my family with junk food. Oh boy. Hey, Billy Burrito, sorry about the clickbait tagline, but I'm really hoping you can give me some advice here. I'm a 24-year-old guy who's 5'7 and 250 pounds. Oh, that's not good. I live with my parents, still not by choice, just don't have the funds to move. Well, it's the middle of a pandemic. It's a tough year, man. And I've been trying to change my diet for over a year now. I started March, 19th, uh, March 2019. I was 300 pounds and dropped to 220 by September through a fad diet. Things were going good, but the holidays came around. And with it came some calories. I moved past it, only gaining a few pounds and resolving to lose them by cleaning up my diet even more. Good for you. But around then, for some reason, my mother kicked up the amount of junk food she kept around the house by a, by a lot, uh, by a lot. She didn't stop. We went from having a few snacks around the house to having over 60% of the groceries being garbage sugar food. With all that crap laying around the kitchen in my face and, and less than normal food, it got hard to remain resolute. Okay, so he says, why not just buy your own food, you may ask. I absolutely try to. The problem is the way that we've worked out my rent situation, I simply pay for two large family expenses in exchange for living there, that being our phone bill and our groceries. To make things simple, I just give her my bank card and tell her the groceries I'd like, and she gets, uh, and she gets that and then gets the family groceries. It makes it all more frustrating 
that all this junk is being purchased with my money. Uh, so obvious. So the obvious solution is just to go and buy the groceries myself, right? Wrong. She winds up making separate runs just for snacks, sugary cereals, donuts, cake, cookies, chips, soda, etc. We're constantly overstocked on the stuff. Whenever I leave my room, I see you're eating at least one of them, which brings me to the part I'm really worried about. Yeah, she, you're, you're, li you're living with an addict, basically, a food addict. She's got, it's happening today. I had those steak and egg burritos, and I ate like, and now I'm on the fucking crack again. So you got to get off it. Um, and then you won't crave it, and then you won't buy it. All right. Anyways, plowing ahead. Um, all of this crap is making my family super unhealthy. My seven- and eight-year-old brother and sister have both steadily been steadily gaining weight. I will try to control them when I'm home, asking them how many cookies they had or making them eat some real food for lunch instead of a third huge bowl of cereal. They just go around me and ask my mom if they can eat more sugar, who seems to have completely stopped giving a shit about their health. Oh, dude, this is getting... Is there a light at the end of this fucking sugar tunnel here? Um, yesterday, I literally watched her give up, give up on trying to get my little brother to eat a sandwich and hand him an ice cream bar for dinner. Every time I try and push them to eat healthy, they react to me like I'm a mean brother for doing so, and I'm starting to resent my mother for making me feel like a bad guy for wanting my siblings to be healthy, and that's not even mentioning how large my mother is getting. Yeah, dude, you need a family meeting here, I think. She has to be approaching 300 pounds. She gets completely winded just walking down our driveway to the mailbox, and I hear her struggling just to make it up and down the stairs every day. I'm incredibly concerned about her well-being, and I've even voiced this to her before. She will say something like, yeah, I know it's a problem, and she'll even discuss diets she heard about but then never do anything. I've asked her to get a gym membership with me, and she talks about it like it's some kind of fantasy, like, oh, yeah, we should do that. I read about an exercise program. Or... So-and-so told me about one gym I was really thinking about checking out, but it's all non-committal bullshit she says in the moment and never follows up on. Sorry for the long email. I hope you read it. I could really use the advice. Love your SNL appearance. Thank you. You absolutely killed it. And I'm looking forward to the next time you're at Hilarities in Cleveland. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, you got to sit down and have a heart-to-heart a, a -heart and just say, just say, Mom, I'm worried you're going to die. We're, we can't do this. We need to do... We have to do better. I'm not saying get rid of all the ice cream and chips. We just have to tone it down. And then maybe just go out and join a gym and get her a membership too. And just go like, just walk on the treadmill with me. Just do something to get her going. But that's a, um, that's a tough thing, you know, and this has been a really stressful year. And I think there's like, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine and basically everybody in this pandemic has gone one way or the other. They either got in really good shape or they just gained like 20, 30 pounds. So, um, yeah, man, that's really hard. And it's literally like if you're living with somebody who doesn't want to get sober, like somebody who doesn't want to fucking buy good food. Uh, first things first is you got to look out for yourself and you got to you got to just stop eating that shit that's laying around because you don't want it. You don't want to eat it. You don't want the result of it. And you have to mentally get past the craving. You know? And think about what you're doing to your body. And also know that all you have to do is just sit down and eat a garden salad. And it just levels. It, I feel like it brings that sugar salt fucking bouncing back and forth. It levels you out and it makes you, your brain sane again as far as the next thing it says that it wants to eat. And um, yeah, but that's hard with the young kids there too. Yeah, I would sit down and talk to her about it. and just I would just say, listen, I'm not eating this stuff anymore. All right? I'm not eating it anymore. And... You know, you're fat. The kids are getting fat. My siblings are getting fat or whatever. You kind of got to, in a nice way, you know, it's, if it's usually your dad, it'd be easy. Like, dad, you're getting tits. What are we doing here? You know, women, you got you to gotta make sure you got to do the mini series. You got to make it nice, a little opening music. I don't know. But I, I, I would go that route. Uh, good luck with that. But uh, don't, you know, you work so hard to lose that weight, man. Don't get drawn into somebody else's fucking food heroin binge here um all right well good luck with that okay marrying my step sister all right dearest billy bitch tits hey uh my girlfriend and i have been together for close to five years we have what some would call a perfect a picture perfect relationship she's cool as fuck smart funny and the most gorgeous woman i've ever known that's great uh we rarely argue and have an incredible sex life uh oh what's gonna happen here why would you write in if it was so perfect and it's been 
the equivalent of dating my best friend. Oh, wait a second. I forgot the title of this. I bought a ring this summer, and I'm preparing to pop the question and spend the rest of my life with her. All that shit just got turned on its fucking head. We hosted Thanksgiving for our families at our house in 2019. I lost my dad when I was a teenager, and she lost her mom when she was a child. Our parents had never met each other before this Thanksgiving dinner. The holiday went really well. Everyone got along, and I thought that was the end of it. Oh, no. Fast forward to last week. Our parents called us up and wanted to take us out for dinner. Oh, no. We met them at the restaurant, and they revealed that, unbeknownst to us, they'd been seeing each other without our knowledge since Thanksgiving dinner and presented us with rings and a marriage license. They took a trip to Vegas the week before, and our parents got fucking married. All in capital letters. I am now legally in a relationship with my stepsister. I could have killed both of our parents right then and there at the table in my local, I'm not going to say the name of the place, the audacity. What the fuck do I do? I'm now effectively dating my living stepsister. My feelings for her haven't changed, but how can I marry my stepsister? I think, come on, dude, you were already banging her before they got together, right? Should I break up with the woman of my dreams because my mom turned out to be a huge slut and my and her dad had zero problems banging his daughter's boyfriend's mom? All right, dude, you're in a very high emotional state here. I need some advice on what to do from a fre fellow freckled fuck to help guide me through this Jerry Springer-esque situation. I have found myself smack in the middle of. Huge fan, SNL Mogul was the tits. Monologue was the tits. And as always, go fuck yourself. Yeah, fuck that. For all you know, they're going to get divorced. Marry who you're supposed to marry. They did steal your thunder. I mean, now I guess you got, you got to elope. You can't have your, and, uh, <laughs> who's presenting the rings? My mom and her dad. Also my stepdad and her stepmom. Ah, crazy. You need like disclaimers. I stay with her, man. Stay with her. Wow. Wow. They really fucking, it's like they came in and stole your idea though. I can see how you're so upset. That is fucking weird. And like selfish that they just went ahead and did that. Like, do they think your relationship with that woman is a joke? I really understand why you're upset. I wasn't thinking for a second. I was just thinking the, the logistics, how it's embarrassing. But like, this is, there's a ridiculous selfishness to this. But sometimes in love, you have to be selfish. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Well, at least, uh, Oh, where's the silver lining in this? At least uh, you'll have one less in-law. <laughs> one of your in-laws you'll be related to. I don't know. I think you just rebooted the Brady Bunch is what you did. Greg marries Marsha. Um, oh, my nose. Facial. Sorry. All right. Employee questions. <laughs> Apple store. All right. This is what I ask people. People who work with the public. I wanted the top five dumb questions that people have been asking you. And these, these have been great so far. Okay, here we go. All right. Hey, Mr. Burr, straight to the point. I worked at an Apple store from 2011 to 2018. You did your time. Signed up for a second hitch, didn't you? Um, since I know you love going there, here is the flip side. I got to stop blaming that store for my own ignorance on technology. Here is the flip side of what we as employees have to suffer through with some of these mouth breathers. These, these are all going to be me. I've probably done all these top five dumb questions at the Apple store. I feel like Paul Schaefer should be playing a little music right now. All right. Number five question, which Nike shoes do you sell here? Answer. We don't sell shoes here. There's an accessory that would go into your shoe as part of the Nike run club. But people legit thought we sold Nikes for a time. I didn't know that. Is it Nike or Nike? I never knew. All right. Number four question. Do I get a discount if I buy multiple iPhones, Macs, iPads? Answer, no, but I can sell you multiple devices at full price. Yeah, you got to be a business, I think, to do that. Even then, you probably couldn't do it. Number three, why won't my phone ring? Hands me the phone. I flip the mute switch to off on the side or turn off, do not disturb, and hand it back. Ugh. Number two, I'm seeing a lot of me in these. Number two, question. What's my Apple, Wi-Fi, Twitter, Facegram, Instagram, email, et cetera, et cetera, password? Answer, why would I, a stranger, know that? <laughs> I, 
I haven't even been dumb enough to ask that. Number one, drum roll, Anton Fig. Uh, where are the Microsoft Surfaces? Answer, at the micro Microsoft Store. I like that you fucking give these people shit. I like it. You can't get mad that it says genius on your shirt, you know? You know, I was going to get upset, but, you know, I don't mind taking shit from a genius. Uh, thanks for all the laughs and everything you do, and we'll uh, continue to. Thank you. Best to you, the lovely Neil, and your two little ones. Thank you very much. Well, I think I've asked dumber questions than that with some more colorful verbiage. You know, like, why do I have to buy a brand new fucking everything every single time one of your fucking stupid fucking cunty ass fucking device that I don't even need? The last one was fine. Do I need to buy a new fucking a whole new charger system from right into the wall of my house to out in my fucking car. It's so goddamn annoying. And why do you, ugh, I don't want to talk about Apple and they fucking, they just pay that fucking fine for damaging the environment every year. Cause it's cheaper than actually fucking trying to make their shit a little more greener. I don't know what, where, what world these people think we're going to live in at the end of this. I have no fucking idea. All right, whatever, whatever. I pick on Apple too much. They're not the only ones. They're not the only ones. 45 minutes in. Let's get into some of the questions here as I read them off of my phone. I got to tell you something. I have really good looking kids. Thank God I married a beauty. You know? All I did was lighten them up. God damn, they're good looking kids. Every time I turn on my phone, I can't believe those are my kids. Um, all right, here we go. I listened. Okay, here we go. I listened to 12 years of MMP in six months. What? Hey, Billy, legs as white as mozzarella. Uh, Burr, I'm a 23-year-old guy from Egypt. Dude, what's going on? Other side of the world. Can I crash at your pad and I'll go look at the pyramids? Hey, does anybody in Egypt go and look at the pyramids or is that like going to fucking Times Square? I bet if you live in Egypt, every time one of your friends comes to visit, it's like, all right, let's go ride a fucking camel and go over to the goddamn fucking pyramids. Jesus Christ, you know, and then when you can actually take them to like the cool part of Cairo, I don't even know where the pyramids are. I know they're in Egypt, though. Um, I am a 23 year old guy from Egypt and arguably your biggest fan in this part of the world. Well, yeah, I don't think you have a lot of competition. I would like to thank you for your help throughout one of the roughest patches of my short life. I graduated last spring from my college as an architect. That's amazing. That's a really cool job, by the way being an architect, designing that. I love, I love the combination of like when, when science meets like art at the same time. That's what I like about uh, watching people like customize anything or build cars or design buildings and shit. I think it's amazing. So congratulations to you. You must be a really talented person. Let's get to the tough part of your life. My last semester was spent during the pandemic and I spent all of it at home uh, it was a six-month-long six semester, which included the most important part of my degree, a part that requires hours upon hours of work, I would imagine. You're designing buildings. People are going to be in them, and you don't want them to collapse. I would imagine that that is quite a skill to learn. <clears throat> you wouldn't want me designing it. I basically worked myself into a zombie. The average workday throughout this period was 18 hours in front of a computer screen or until my eyes started to twitch or my hands start to shake. Uh, you know, you can get those blue glasses, blue tinted glasses to look at computer screens. Um, it's a little late to tell you that, but in the future, if you further your studies, I heard that those things work. Um, and to make it work, I couldn't go to the gym or work with a friend um, due to the pandemic. And my only friend during these terrible nights was you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. All right. Your podcast was always playing in the background of my computer. I went through 12 years of the MM podcast in six miserable months, and it was the only thing that would make me smile or laugh. Jesus Christ. You could actually learn how to be an architect with my dumbass talking in the background? That's amazing. I know this sounds horrible, but on the bright side, I finished this semester with a 4.0 GPA because you put the fucking work in. You didn't whine about it. You got down to when you got it done. Good for you. That's inspiring. And graduated top of my class and got a scholarship for my master's degree and I wouldn't be kissing your pale ass if I told you that I couldn't have done that without your podcast. Look at that. Look at the juxtaposition of the smart thing he's doing versus the ignorance of this podcast. It all comes together. Um, I remember several nights when I had no more fight in me and I wanted to sleep so bad. But I just kept telling myself, just play some clips from the MM podcast and, 
and push through the night. Dude, this is starting to feel like a paid ad. This guy's kissing my ass so much. I hope this makes it to the podcast so that I can hear you read it. And so that maybe 20 years from now, one of your kids may stumble upon it on YouTube and know that their old freckled cunt of a dad <laughs> helped out a guy he doesn't know in a country he probably can't point to on a map. What are you talking about? I like that you trashed me in the end. I know where it is. It's right there on uh, the, the northeast of, uh, of Africa. And then you got the, uh, the little canal there. You had the Six-Day War with Israel. Anwar Sadat was one of my favorite world leaders. And I hated when he got, he got assassinated. I know a little bit about that over there. What is that? Not the Red Sea. What the, I used to know the name of that, um, that little channel there. Because back in the day, you'd have to sail all the way around. All the fuck way around. Um, see, I'm not that bad. Isn't Algeria and Libya is all up there? For all you guys know, I'm looking at a map now, but I'm not. I'm kind of into geography. I was doing this thing for a while where I wanted to learn every single country. And then I discovered how difficult that was, and I, I didn't stick with it. But this guy did, and now he's a fucking architect. And he got a, he got a fucking, what did he get? Uh, he got a scholarship for his master's degree. That's amazing. Can you imagine the podcast studio this guy could design? All right, Halloween advice. Oh, oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Come on, play it. Play it's it. Time for hey, host, that's me. And I'm off this somebody else. All right, it's time for advice on Halloween. Halloween advice. Okay. Well, how can you have Halloween? We're all well, I guess because we're all wearing masks. It's safe. Where I got to throw the candy at the kids this year? Come on, people. Is this microphone on? All right. Here we go. Hi, Bill. Hello, person. Uh, hope you and the family are doing well. I am in need of your advice on a con controversial subject. And who better than you? I have a few nephews ages 2 to 12 years old that are into superheroes. One of my nephews is about 4 to 5 years old and wants to be Black Panther for Halloween. He's inspired by the story and likes the character. My sister-in-law wants to get him a costume, but her white friends are telling her that she cannot have her son as Black Panther because he's white. Well, do they have like, well, wait a second. What, what sort of mask does he? <laughs> wait a second. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So wait, is it just a suit? And then his white face sticks out? The front, and then you got to put them in. You're not going to put, don't put them in, whatever it is. Do not go blackface on this one. Please, white people, for the love of God. Uh, all right, my nephew does not understand racism, nor truly understands why someone would discriminate against someone else's based on the color of their skin. It almost seems wrong to tell a child you cannot be a character based on their skin. Should my nephew be Black Panther on a, for Halloween? Yeah, if it's just the costume, I would do that. All right. I would don't try to make don't do the blackface thing with his face. OK, is this whitewashing or racist? Just want to make sure myself and my family are not ignorant to any racist actions. All right. And who better to ask but a fucking white guy on this one? Wait a second. Let's see. Black Panther. Let me see what this costume looks. The first one. Halloween. God damn it. Not Galloween. Halloween. Halloween. Costume. All right. If it's just his face pointing out, I don't see why he can't do it. Oh, what a surprise. Look at this. It's, it's not going to load. This internet that I fucking pay a million dollars for? You fucking cunts. Let's go. All right. I'll, it won't pull up. So here's the deal. Yeah, if it's just like, you know, if it's just like a fucking, like an Iron Man costume. I got to be honest with you. I saw Black Panther. I can't remember them. I can't remember movies. I don't know what it is. I see him and I just immediately forget him. I imagine his face had to be obscured somehow. You know, some sort of mask or something. I just just put your white kid in the, in the costume and that's it. Just don't put any fucking blackface shit on his face and you should be fine. I think you should be fine. I think uh, if that's all you're doing, then I think your white friends are wrong. Um, but what you should do is ask one of your black friends <laughs> and when they're done laughing, I'm sure they'll give you an answer. All right. All right. <clears throat> Where to move to. Hey, Bill, Bilbo Naggins. Here's the top five states to live in. One, New Hampshire, lowest crime rate, poverty rate and pollution levels in the country. Great scenery and very 
few people. Health system is one of the best in the country, and schools are exceptional. No state income tax or sales tax, and not to mention it's close to Massachusetts. Minnesota, I know you love lakes, and here you can buy the cheapest waterfront property with more than 11,000 lakes. I love Minnesota. It's just cold as shit. Uh, both global warming, who knows? Third safest state with excellent schools and fourth lowest poverty rate. However, very cold in the winter. I mean, minus 30 degrees. All right, that's out. Idaho. I can't go Idaho. That's where every Hollywood douche ends up going. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the middle, so you won't have to spend a lot of time in planes. Very low crime and good. Yeah, but I'll have to have a lot of connecting flights. And good schools and very beautiful, but costs of houses are rising because most Californians are moving here. Yes. Uh, Houston slash Austin, Texas. I am not doing Texas. Texas had a biblical level fucking drought a few years ago, and you have fires just like L.A. and hurricanes. So I'm just substituting earthquakes for hurricanes. Surprisingly liberal with low taxes. You can contact your friends there about the level of racism. Good schools, but not good health care system. Five, Ohio. I love Ohio. Uh, you can move next door to Dave. Uh, he can tell you about Ohio, especially the experiences of people of color. Uh, Bye-bye and good luck, but we know you aren't moving. No, I'm not fucking moving. I'm not moving. Um, I actually think I'm going to stick it out here and watch L.A. go down to the fucking population. It should be be able to cruise around. Um, all right. Abusive girlfriend. Hey, Billy, the baggy balls burr. I'm a 23 year old from Malaysia. Hey, I like the internationals. This is great. No one people are listening. You're all the way in Malaysia. You're listening to this. It's amazing. Uh, yes, I can't find Malaysia. It's down on uh, the South, uh, the South Pacific, right down near the Philippines, right? Singapore and all over there, right? I've been my, with my gr girlfriend for over a year. She was fun and pleasant for the first six months of our lives. Probably hot. I feel like every chick down there is like every chick in like the Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore. They're all beautiful. Um, she was fun and pleasant for the first six months of our relationship. I quit my job at our national border, which is three hours from where she lives. Uh, things were wonderful until I lost my hair from radiotherapy. For my acoustic neuroma. Acoustic neuroma. The second I hear acoustic, I'm thinking guitar. I don't even know what that is. She started getting verbally abusive and calling me names like ugly, naked mole rat. Holy shit. She threatened to murder me anytime she would think I would fuck up. And she'd get angry anytime I made small, a small mistake like turning into a wrong alley. I say sorry now more than I say I love her. Yeah, dude, dump this fucking douche. I would just lower myself just to avoid argu getting into arguments. Yeah, buddy, you're in a, an abusive relationship. You need to get some self-esteem and get out of this thing. And don't even think because of what you went through, no other, you're not going to get another woman. You are, and you're going to get someone who's actually a fucking human being other than this fucking twat. In the last three months, she just started to get physical. She justified her actions by saying that she came from a broken home. Her dad left and her mom were barely home. They live with her stepdad now, and things are okay at home. And they all like me. Whenever I tried to break up with her, she always says that she would kill herself if I ever left. Well, that's her fucking fault. I don't want that baggage to be put on me. Uh, what do you think I should do? Apologies for the bad grammar. Your grammar's been great. Big fan. Thank you. Go fuck yourself. Uh, you should break up with her. You should break up with her. You should absolutely break up with her. 100 fucking percent. Her fucking suicidal bullshit is not your problem. And she's calling you a naked mole rat and getting physical with you. And she has all these fucking excuses. Do you want to stay with this broad? It's got to be like, look, uh, you got to go to therapy and fix yourself or I'm leaving. All right. Dude, fuck that. Fuck that. I would just I would fucking I would just this is like poker. I would just match what she's saying. You know, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. All right. If I stay in this relationship with you, I'm going to kill myself. So what should I do? If you leave, I'm going to kill myself. What are, you, what are you fucking reading Shakespeare? Grow up. Go, go fucking, fucking be an asshole to some new guy. Um, if you want to go passive aggressive, you could just stop apologizing. How about this? How about you stop apologizing and then she gets so mad she breaks up. Now you're playing a game. You can't listen. I'm not trying to belittle the fact that she's saying she's suicidal, but... Um, I kind of lost any sort of empathy for her when she said what she said about you, considering what you were going through with your acoustic guitar uh, cancer there, whatever the fuck it is. Um, all right. Top five stupid questions. 
Yeah, break up with her, dude. Break up with her. Go find the woman of your dreams and live your fucking life instead of being held emotionally hostage by this lunatic. And thank you for listening. Listening? Listening. Over there in Malaysia. Shout out to everybody in Malaysia except for that fucking cunt. All right, top five stupid questions uh, for, uh, from a lawyer. Oh, this is, this is a new segment. If you work with the general public, we have the top five stupid questions. And I'm guilty of it. I went to Joshua Tree and I asked the park ranger, where is the Joshua Tree? All right, so I'm not looking down on anybody, but I do love reading these. All right. Hello, Bill. I have worked in the legal field. <laughs> Just picturing that park ranger's face when he was looking at me like, is this guy fucking with me? And then the realization that I was serious and, this is in, and then which slowly turned into excitement on his face that he had a story to tell his friend, his fellow coworkers. All right. <clears throat> Hello, Bill. I have worked in the legal field. What is that thing? I just went to inhale through my mouth and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, somebody pulled the choke on you. I don't know what that is. All right. I've worked in the legal field in various capacities throughout the last six years. Uh, from investigating sex crimes, oh Jesus, to transporting federal prisoners to being in many courtrooms. My experience... Uh, my experiences have not lacked any excitement or stupid questions. All right. Number one, I was reading off my first warrant I ever served in a county jail. This warrant was for a battery charge, and she was in solitary confinement during this time. The young girl asked, so does this mean I, I can't go home right now? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. You're being charged with... Hitting an old woman over the head with a safe. So, like, does that mean I can't go home right now? Oh, Jesus. Um, while investigating a sex crime. Oh, boy. The person who is believed to be extremely guilty of committing several crimes at a daycare admitted many of these atrocities to the police on tape. When I asked him about the question, he says, does this look bad? Oh, boy. He admitted to doing that at a daycare center. Like, dude, they should just take that guy out back and once they try him and convict him and just shoot him in the fucking head. I, I, I have no sex offenders. That's, that's it. So it's a wrap. See you. Don't need you. Uh, number three, while in federal court, a resentencing hearing was taking place for a man who had been in prison for seven years for production of meth. An intern sitting next to me while the man was in shackles and a prison uniform actually asked me, is he under arrest? <laughs> wow, dude, these are great. During my first autopsy, I thought you were a lawyer. A sheriff deputy asked me, so do we just throw the whole body away when we're done? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, and that guy has a gun, right? He had a gun on his hip, and he said that. All right. All right. Okay, number five. Following a court hearing where a mother who was high on meth, a family court hearing and the mother is high on meth. I mean, that alone. The mother's parental rights were terminated. The mother asked the judge, when do I bring my daughter back for the next court thing? <laughs> God. Thank you, Bill, for bringing many much-needed laughs for me during the week. Also, best to you, Nia, and the two little burrs. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. That's such a great segment. You guys are really writing in a bunch of killer stuff. Um, speaking of which, my daughter made my son laugh for the second time. My son has laughed twice in his short little cute life, and she's made him laugh both times. They absolutely love each other. And um, he was laying on his belly, and he's really like, coordinated and um he's already like figuring out how to crawl he's absolutely the most adorable little baby boy i've ever seen in my life so she does this thing where she was just doing like you know blowing on his back making the fart noises and he just thought it was hilarious he was doing those squeals and everything and then she started cracking up laughing and he laughed too and i got it all on video it's the greatest thing ever and um I don't know. We've been having the best time. We've just been having the best time. So um, I made some pumpkin bread last night because I'm a holiday guy. Dooby dooby do. And somehow I fucked it up. I don't think I put enough sugar in it. Um, but anyway, I, um, I'm i totally, I got to figure out how we're going to do the Halloween thing with my daughter. Um, 
I'm thinking me and my wife maybe can just be in different rooms, bedrooms, and she can just keep going back and forth knocking. I'll just have different hats and act like I'm different people until we fill up her candy or something. We'll have to do something. She gets it because everybody's sick. She gets it. But um, she already has her costume picked out. She's getting excited and stuff. So it's kind of going to suck. Like most people, you got to tell your kids, "Eh, there's no Halloween this year. But something that they'll get to guilt their kids about. You should be happy. I remember when I was a kid one year, they canceled Halloween. Marrying stepsister. Been through the same. All right. Billy No Shoulders. I like that one. By the way, Billy No Shoulders is up to fucking three pounders, 11 reps, no pain. No pain whatsoever. I'm cruising along here. I figure once I just need to uh, just keep doing this, get up to about 10, 11, 12 pounds, and it's going to be pull-up time again for me. Um, all right. If I could just somehow get to a lat pull-down machine somewhere during this fucking pandemic. Billy No Shoulders, you had a listener email in on Monday the 19th about a guy um, about to marry his stepsister. This also happened to me when I was 20. Jesus Christ, who knew that this was like a fucking thing? I've been going out with my high school girlfriend for a few years. One day her dad had dropped off, had dropped her off at my mom's house. Wait. Okay, so just to refresh uh, people who didn't listen to the last podcast, this guy was dating this chick, and his dad ended up marrying his girlfriend's mother. They were both single, obviously. And they hit it off. They got married while he was still dating this chick. So his girlfriend then became legally his stepsister. Um, okay, so this person is saying this also happened to me. One day, her dad had dropped off, dropped her off at my mom's house where I was living at the time. No issues with this, or so I thought. Over the next few weeks, he started to drop her off more and more. Being young and ignorant, I didn't think anything of it until the day came when they, my mom and her dad, sat my girlfriend and I down to tell us they were now an item and that he would be moving in. Oh, my God. To say that my mom is a selfish cunt would be an understatement. Every one of her friends, her family, and even my dad, her ex-husband, tried to tell her this was a fucked up situation, but she was having none of it. No more than a month of him moving in, they broke the news to us that they were getting married. Imagine marrying a guy you've known for the best part of three months. You can see how this is going to end. Well, it seemed to work back in the day, but then again, people just didn't believe in divorce. Um, Anyways, he put the S on it. Thank you. Anyway, my girlfriend and I broke up because of this situation. Then things became more fucked up when my now ex-girlfriend's mother kicked her out of the house. And guess where she had to come and live? You guessed it, with us. Now I'm getting confused. I told my mom that I wouldn't be going to the wedding and that this entire situation was going to take a toll on my relationship with her. To which she replied, if you don't like it, go and live with your dad. So I did. My mom and her new husband-to-be went and bought a house together and got married. I stood by my, I stood my ground and didn't go to the wedding. Fuck them. The marriage lasted two months. Wow. I'm now 29 and haven't had a relationship with my mom since. Fuck her. Anyways, hope you and the family stay safe. Stop blowing out your shoulders, lifting up a pint of water, you bald pussy. Uh, Thanks and get fucked. Um, This person's a fellow private pilot and a drummer. Drum lover from Scotland. All right. Yeah, fucking drum loving cunt. Um, Well, she is your mother, so someday someday you're going to have to patch it up, but... uh, Wow. What a whirlwind of shit that was. And the fact that it just lasted. I got to commend you for not just showing up being like, hey, what did I say? I, dude, I called it and giving her all kinds of shit. Um, you know, at some point, you just have to understand that your parents are human. You know what? That doesn't work with this. Yeah, you, yeah, you got a nut job for a mom. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but she is your mom, so at some point, You know, if you don't like it, go live with your dad. Wow. Wow. I, I, my advice to you, I would just, I would try to find the humor in it and I would just, I wouldn't let it go for a long time, but I wouldn't be nasty about it. I would just be making jokes. 
Just be like, hey, mom, you know, I, uh, I got a new job. Do you want to come down and start fucking my boss and maybe marry him? And then two, two days later, divorce him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would just do that. I mean, what else can you do? Um, but I will tell you this. Don't fucking turn to alcohol to fucking help it. All right? Because that'll be a whole other problem. And you'll end up having a two-month marriage also.